Okay, so next up is uranium, uh, which is my favourite actinide. It's the one I uh, handle in the lab. It's also the boogeyman of the periodic table, I think. As soon as you say uranium to people, people start going, ooh, not sure about that. Uranium is the basis of much of nuclear power, and it exists in two isotopes. That's two atoms of different weight. There's uranium-238, which is the most abundant one, and the other, uranium-235, which is the one which, when irradiated with neutrons, will split in half and release nuclear energy. And a lot of work has been done, or was done during the Second World War, on the separation of these isotopes of uranium, and including the construction of the biggest mass spectrometers that had ever been made. And Fortunately, the separation of the uranium isotopes is really very difficult, which is why it is only very large and rich countries have been able to afford to make nuclear weapons. But it's actually a really interesting element to deal with. Uh, it's got a wide variety of oxidation states. Uh, and if you use it in its depleted form, it's actually relatively safe to handle in the laboratory. Now, depleted material only contains a very small quantity of fissile uranium which is used in bombs and nuclear reactors, about 0.2 of a percent. It actually means that the problem with handling depleted uranium is not the radioactivity, although you have to uh, make provision for this. The real problem is that it's highly poisonous and about half a gram would kill you in a very short period of time because it attacks your liver very effectively. So once you've removed the uranium-235, you're still left with a very large amount, 99 points, more than 99% of the mass of your original uranium is uranium-238, in which you have removed most, but not all, of the uranium-235. And this is so-called depleted uranium, which is some of the densest material you can get. And so it is used where you want something very heavy that's not too large. So, for example, it's used in the counterweights that people put in aeroplanes, in liners, in large aeroplanes, to balance the plane because you can use, a, a, it takes up only a small volume of space. It is also used in a number of weapons because you can get a very heavy bullet or shell for armor piercing, but it has the rather unfortunate um, property as a metal that if you hit it very hard and suddenly, it can um, shatter into very small pieces which can then react with the air. And so this is why the depleted uranium munitions can then cause quite a lot of pollution because it can cause some radioactivity when it blows apart. Uranium turnings just look like any other metal. It's just silvery, uh, shiny. There's bits of it which are slightly darkened where it's reacted with the air and oxidised. Uh, the halides are quite interesting. If you make uh, uranium tetrachloride, uh, it's bright green, sort of emerald green colour. It's really beautiful to look at. And if you make what's called uranyl dichloride, which is UO2Cl2, it's bright yellow. Never ever allow uranium out of a flask, because if you're in a position to smell it, you're in a position to inhale it, and that's where the damage will be done. We have to keep it safe and secure in a safe and we have to fill out huge amounts of paperwork. Many a forest has been chopped down for this paperwork, I'm sure, but it's all very important uh, because you have to be certain that when you're handling your, uh, depleted uranium compounds that you're not going to end up poisoning anybody and you're not going to end up getting radioactive compounds all over the place. So we have logbooks and we have to record how much we use and when and how we dispose of it. Uh, we have detectors which we have to sweep the lab. Uh, well, a lot of people usually start off with, I imagine you glow in the dark, uh, which if I could do that, I'd have passed away a long time before that point. Um, yeah, it, it's the boogeyman thing again. A lot of people are quite sort of surprised and you know, sort of shocked to hear that you're, you're handling this stuff. But actually, it's just like most of the chemicals in the periodic table. And once you get past the boogeyman image of it, it's actually a very interesting element to work with.